Europe and Western civilization has been absolutely dominant for much of the last 500 years. Europe colonized the vast majority of the world, connected the disparate parts of the world during the Age of Exploration while ushering in the age of the greatest technological growth in world history. The West has been so vital to nearly every single aspect of modern history that removing it would completely change the history of the world's direction. For this reason, I've considered the thought experiment of what the world would be like if we just removed the West from existence in the late Middle Ages, let's say conveniently with the Black Death. How would the world be different today? What would borders, cultures, wars, and demographics be like? That is the question of this alternate history. Before we start, I understand this topic is deeply unrealistic. Any plague that would wipe out Europe would also wipe out the rest of Eurasia at least. In this timeline's initial point of departure, it's not meant to be realistic, just the start of an interesting thought experiment. I also must say, I owe the idea for this timeline to Kim Stanley Robinson's The Years of Rice and Salt, a popular alternate history book about this very topic that in general is quite creative, poorly written, and terribly historically inaccurate. So with that out of the way, let's move along. This timeline's start is pretty self-explanatory. A version of the bubonic plague appears that wipes out 99% of Christian Europe's population and, for plot reasons, leaves the rest of the world's population unaffected. This leaves Europe a blank slate, relatively similar to the New World, Oceania, and Southern Africa, all of which which face 90% death rates from the introductions of European diseases. Let's say the region between the Atlantic and Eastern Russia and the Mediterranean and Arctic Sea is completely denuded of population. This leaves Islam as Europe's main competitor to fill the void. We would see the Islamic peoples neighboring Europe immigrating into the continent. Moroccans would cross into Spain, Tunisians into Italy, and Turks into the Balkans. Before the Black Death, Europe had near-complete dominance over the Mediterranean Sea, with Islamic powers being quite weak. This would immediately alter, the Tunisians being able to occupy strategic central islands of Corsica, Sardinia, and Sicily would be able to become the new dominant force in the Mediterranean, as the new merchant class of the region, thus being able to expand their influence and build a thalassocracy in the region. Populations under the right conditions can go through immense population growth. This is why the 750,000 British settlers in the 13 colonies likely have somewhere in the range of 150 million descendants today, or how the populations of the Arab world have gone up by a factor of 7 or 8 since 1950. We would see very similar conditions in this timeline's Europe, with the Islamic populations growing in massive proportions as they would expand into fertile and temperate Europe. We would see a Turkish migration up the Danube Valley into Germany. The Moroccans would have a monopoly on the Atlantic coast and so would populate Spain, France, and the British Isles. Tunisia would settle Italy and Provence. Scandinavia is very much a toss-up. Similarly to every migration, oppressed groups would leave in disproportionate numbers. I could easily see the North African Berbers developing a nation in the Alps or seizing power somewhere in Europe. Armenians, the traitors of this region and brutally oppressed, might form their own independent nation in Central Europe where they had trade connections beforehand. The Ottoman Empire was already forming when the Black Death occurred, and they would have been able to capitalize on the depopulation of the Balkans to become unbelievably powerful. In effect, the demographic and geographic factors of a massive depopulated temperate region that could be settled would be pretty similar to those that let the U.S. get so huge and powerful. However, the political and technological factors just wouldn't be there. The U.S. only got as big as it did since it had the railroad and industrialization, without which controlling the West Coast and beating the Confederacy would be impossible. Also, the U.S. federal system let them get new states without really straining government, which would be impossible in the centralized harem court-based Ottoman Empire. After a few centuries, the region around the Upper Danube in Germany would split off as an independent Turkish nation apart from Ottoman control. Similarly, Morocco would inevitably lose its European possessions, which, due to Europe's much greater fertility, would quickly outnumber and overpopulate the mother nation. Tunisia, being a naval power, might be able to maintain control over Italy, a peninsula, with power gradually moving from lightly populated Tunisia 
the much wealthier and more populous Italy. Holding on to Italy would mean that Tunisia and this whole region would remain independent of the Ottomans, who would stop in Egypt. Another interesting factor is the Mongols, which would likely be able to populate Russia and much of Eastern Europe. The Mongol population was tiny, and these areas are huge, and so this would take a while. We would see a very interesting culture exist as the Mongols would settle down to farm these regions, which aren't very suitable to the steppe herder lifestyle. Due to the Mongols' skill and organization and warrior spirit, giving them a massive numerical advantage due to agriculture would make them a truly horrific nation to fight. Mongol Russia is almost certainly going to be a great power at some point, maybe dismantling the Ottoman Empire in the 19th century. People don't seem to understand how money and technology are gained. There's this really annoying misconception that the world is a zero-sum game, and so technology and money are gained by taking them from somewhere else. Well, every piece of evidence instead points to the importance of the existence of systems that incentivize people to work hard and invent things. This was a big issue I found with the Years of Rice and Salt, in which the author, Kim Stanley Robinson, assumed that if Europe was wiped out, the Asian civilizations would advance further technologically than they did, which in reality would never have occurred. Both China and Islam had the opportunities to become technological and economic powerhouses and blew it. China was on the verge of a commercial and industrial revolution in the 11th century, but both were strangled by China's Confucian bureaucracy, which thought they'd be giving too much power to the merchant classes if they did it. Chinese inventions like the compass, gunpowder, and the printing press were nearly completely ignored by a social system that couldn't deal with change very well. Similarly, China was sending fleets outwards in the 15th century, and was on the verge of becoming a colonial power, but then cut itself off immediately afterwards from the rest of the world. Similarly, in the 10th century, Islam was a technological powerhouse of the world, and had developed an advanced capitalist economy, but then made the decision that God is inherently irrational and that science was useless while the study of the Quran gave real truth, since God could change what appeared to us as reality in a second. This was followed by a series of thuggish nomadic rulers which strangled trade. The correlation between empire, wealth, and technological progress simply does not exist. The geographically and demographically biggest empires like the Ottomans, Chinese, Mughals, Spanish, and Russians were all technologically and economically backwards. Meanwhile, the wealthiest and most developed states like England, the Netherlands, or France were relatively small and resource poor. Islam would get no technological or developmental buffs from the colonization of Europe. The West has done nearly all the technological progress of the last 700 years, and as mentioned, none of the other main world cultures were very susceptible to technological progress. A prescient example of this is that the Chinese armies in the late 19th century treated matchlock muskets, or the technological equivalent of what Europe had in the 16th century, which they in fact had imported from Europe, as luxuries, while most of their troops fought with spears. The irony is that China invented gunpowder and guns. India a century before was in a similar situation, one that was rectified by a tiny number of British troops conquering them. The world in this timeline would easily be 300 years behind what it was in ours. Both Islam and China stopped progressing technologically around 1200, and I see little reason why that would change. The discovery of the Americas and the immense age of exploration would never have taken place. The Europeans were able to sail the rough waters of the North Atlantic by combining the stable North European cog design with the multi-level Mediterranean galley design, combined with recent inventions like the compass and astrolabe, which allowed transoceanic voyages. The Muslim naval tradition was simply not as advanced for the harsh waters of the North Atlantic. There is a chance that the Arabs would reach some area like Brazil by accident, but it really doesn't matter. Europe was the only continent that was capable or had any desire to take advantage of naval discoveries. The evidence seems pretty good that the Muslims circumnavigated Africa in the Middle Ages, and that both the Chinese and Muslims knew about Australia for centuries before the Europeans. Hell, I'm not even sure how much I buy it, but there's even a claim that the Spanish Muslims reached South America in the 10th century by accident. However, without a social structure that would let them profit from these discoveries, they were useless. Also, another thing to consider is that the Atlantic shoreline of Europe and Morocco would have absolutely no population pressure due to the depopulation of Europe, and so there'd be little reason to colonize other areas. 
Since the world would be somewhere in the range of 400 years behind what it was in our timeline, this timeline is somewhat more boring than ours. I don't want to talk a lot about the places like Oceania and the Americas, as well as much of Africa, since I plan to make a video soon on what if the Age of Exploration never took place. However, I'll go through some other effects around the world. East Asia would stay in its pleasant stagnation. In the previous rendition of this video, I thought Japan would modernize as it had some characteristics of doing so in the 17th century. However, as I've researched the topic more, I've come to the conclusion that the modernizing impetus came in the first place from contact with the West, and especially the introduction of Western firearms, which revolutionized Japanese military and societal structure. India, without the British after the collapse of the Mughal dynasty, would see a great struggle between the two groups of semi-barbaric horsemen, the Marathas and Afghans. I have no idea which would win, but either way, North India would become a centralized empire ruled by the conquerors and South panoply of various small states. Something few people know is that the Muslims were already in the process of colonizing Africa before the Europeans. In the early 19th century, Egypt was pressing deep into Central Africa, having reached the Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda. This is something that didn't require advanced technology, and I see little evidence of Western impetus for this. Much of this was done to supply slaves for the Islamic slave trade, which is larger than the Atlantic one, and most of whom were gathered from Eastern Africa. However, the big issue we run into with the colonization of Africa was that before modern medicine, non-Africans had few defenses against African diseases, which killed any potential colonizers. This is why Europe only started colonizing Africa a bit more than a hundred years ago. This would retard the colonization of Africa. The world would in general look like this. This timeline may seem strange in that it's changed so little, but remember that that's been the norm in world history. The Middle Ages lasted a thousand years, the Bronze Age 4,000, and Sumer, Harappa, and Egypt were the only world civilizations for 2,000 years. The last 500 years of immense progress and change are very much the exceptions to the rule. Considering it was done basically entirely by the West, that makes it even more bizarre and exceptional. What if all test and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that timeline, please like, comment, subscribe, or stay tuned for additional content. Or alternatively, check out my Patreon where I've got all sorts of cool maps and the start of my history of the world. Or alternatively, check me out on Twitter. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.